Tripods are explained, and what actually is a tripod? Hi, and welcome to episode 97 of the Photography Explained podcast. I'm your host, Rick, and in each episode, I will try to explain one photographic thing to you in plain English in less than 10 minutes-ish without the irrelevant details. What I tell you is based on my lifetime of photographic experience and not Google. Before I go on, if you have a question you would like me to answer, just go to photographyexplainedpodcast.com forward slash start. Okay, here is the answery bit. A tripod is a three-legged piece of photographic equipment designed to give a firm base on which to attach a camera to take photos. Using a tripod gives the photographer the chance to take sharper photos and also to take sharp photos in low light. Right, so that is my answer. So where does the name tripod come from? Well, try is three. That makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, this is in simplistic terms. There's more to it than that, but I'm explaining photography stuff here, not ancient words. And if it had two legs, would it be a bipod? Well, you can get a monopod, which has one leg, so I guess it would. But the pod bit, well, I started looking into this and stopped myself as this really does not matter. Knowing this will not help you and me with our photography, so I'm going to move on. So what actually is a tripod? Well, a tripod is a really useful bit of camera gear, normally made of metal, which has three legs, a centre column, and a bit on the top called the tripod head, which you fix the camera to. Why three legs? Well, three legs gives a firm, stable base. The load is transmitted equally through the three legs to the ground. Add a fourth leg, and you would have a quad pod, I guess. <laughs> it would perform the same function, but not be more stable. In fact, thinking about it, it'd be less stable and harder to work with. So, um, I guess three is the optimum. And if it had two legs, it would, um, well, it'd fall over, wouldn't it? What is the purpose of a tripod? Well, if you check out the previous episodes, you'll find out more. I'll list them later on. But basically, it's to provide a firm base to put your camera on to take sharper photos. What are the different bits of a tripod? First off, you have the legs. You have three legs, of course, which are adjustable in length, so you can adjust the height at which you place the camera. The legs have some kind of locking thing on them, so you can lock the legs at any length. Different tripods have different overall heights, and you need to know this when you're buying a tripod. As in, you need to get the right height of tripod for what you want to do. Centre column. This is the bit that sticks up where the three legs meet at the top. Normally, you can move the centre column up to get more height, although doing this can reduce the overall stability. So practice this first and make sure you read the manufacturer's literature about how to use the tripod to its best. Tripod head. This sits on top of the centre column and is the bit that the camera is connected to. Now there are many different types of tripod head and the right one for you will depend what types of photography you do. I use a geared head for my architectural construction and real estate photography. Quite a big lump but it gives me precise movement of the camera in all three planes. I also use a ball head, which is for my travel photography. Now, this is small, light and quick to use, but not as precise as the geared head. Horses, of course, is very much um, different tripod heads for different uses. Like I say, the tripod head you use depends what type of photography you're doing and also on your personal preferences. How does the camera attach to the tripod? Well, I did try to explain this in the last episode and struggled. I made an absolute hash of it. So I'm going to try again. There is a quick release plate of some sort that attaches to the camera using the tripod mount normally found on the bottom of the camera. The plate has a screw that you screw into the tripod mount. Now the tripod mount is like a socket in the bottom of the camera. It's a threaded socket that you can put the screw into which is sticking up on the mounting plate. So once you've done this, as in attach the mounting plate or quick release plate, call it what you want. Once you've attached the plate onto the bottom of the camera, you can then use the plate to attach the tripod to the camera. I nearly got it wrong again, didn't I? So what you do, you attach, you attach the plate to the camera and then you put the camera with the plate on onto the tripod head and it'll lock in and then you'll have a something that you press to release it. That's a quick release bit. Basically, it means you can take the camera on and off the tripod without having to undo the screw. How heavy is a tripod? Well, the good old answer is it depends. You can get lightweight tripods, you can get heavy tripods, you can get big tripods, you can get little tripods. But this is what you need to make sure of though, that the tripod can take the weight of what you want to put on it, which will normally be your heaviest camera and lens combination. That's the important thing that the tripod is designed to take the weight of your, the heaviest gear you want to put on it. Once you've established that fact, it's down to personal choice and there's lots and lots of choice out there. So let's let me remind you. You're using a tripod to provide a firm base for your camera. So it has to provide that. That is the priority. It's a firm, solid base for your camera. The priority is not that it is shiny and funky. It's not that it's cool. It's not that it makes you look good. Although sometimes I think mine does make me look good. But then again, 
doesn't take much to be honest. The purpose of a tripod is to provide a firm, stable base for a camera. Okay, got that. Great, let's move on. Lightweight tripods. Now this sounds a little bit con counterintuitive. Easy for me to say I thought I got away without making a mistake then, but oh no. So you can get lightweight tripods. Some are great and some are rubbish and completely unsuitable. Now the weight depends on what the tripods are made of and the quality of them. See, it's not just the weight of the tripod that determines how stable the tripod is. This is much more about the design and the quality. In very general terms, a cheap, lightweight tripod will not be great, but an expensive, lightweight tripod will. And the only thing I'm talking about here is how stable the tripod is for the camera that is put on it. What are they made of? Metal. Most tripods are made of metal, commonly aluminium, carbon fibre or steel. Now you can get wooden ones, and I use one. <laughs> I used one once for surveying at college. You know when you put those theodolite thingies on the top. That was a um, long time ago, and as educational as it was, I've never done it since. And I'm also sure there are plastic ones out there that you can get, but metal is the standard material used to make a tripod. And the lighter the metal you use, the more expensive the tripod probably is. What is the best make of tripod? Who knows? There are so many, so I can't answer that. I use Manfrotto tripods. I use Manfrotto tripods and tripod heads for my architectural construction and real estate photography work. And a three-legged thing tripod for my travel photography. And both are great. Don't ask me to choose my favourite. That's like asking me to choose my favourite child. And no, I'm not being paid to say this. I bought both of these tripods with my own money. Hmm, being paid to promote products. I wish. Maybe next year. Anybody out there? I'm open to offers. Oh yeah, they also attach to camera bags. Most camera bags have some sort of attachment so you can attach the tripod to them and that helps. And they quite often come with their own bag. And a top tip here is that you should protect the tri tripod head from damage. <laughs> I can't say tripod on an episode called Tripods Explained. Oh dear. What do I do? Well, I have told you, but I'll add here yet again that I take every photo I can on a tripod. I prefer taking photos on a tripod. Okay, the talky bit. Tripods are an invaluable accessory in photography and I would strongly recommend that you invest in one and learn how to use it. I'm not saying never shoot handheld, which is a matter of personal choice, but if you're remotely serious about photography, I can pretty much guarantee that you will need a tripod at some point in the future. Okay, that was tripods done. Nearly. As in... Not yet. Now, I also use smaller tripods to hold lights, my iPhone, anything that needs holding, really. Tripods are very versatile and dead-handy pieces of kit. I actually have one on my desk which I can quickly put a light on and voila, instant recording studio. Seriously, I have. And I have some really cheap mini tripods which I put smaller gear on. Now, I actually, this got me thinking about how many tripods have I got, so I counted them up. I've got four conventional full-size tripods for photography and I have five tripods heads tripods and I have five tripod heads and that's after selling five last year I had a I had a look around and I totaled up 10 tripod heads I sold five that I hadn't used in donkey's years and I kept two and I got three in reserve so um yeah five's enough I think I've also got six small tripods of varying sizes and quality varying from free things that come with something to them um, a Joby Gorilla Pod which is actually dead handy which I use for recording my YouTube stuff and other stuff what is the perfect tripod? Well, if I find that, I'll let you know. I've bought loads of tripods over the years, but I keep on going back to my Manfrotto 190 Go, which works for me, and my three-legged thing, Corey. Yes, Corey tripod, which I use for travel stuff. Okay, that's tripods done. Related episodes. Episode 95. What are the advantages of using a tripod? Here are five from me. Strange title for an episode, that one. I regret that. Still moving on. And then episode 96. Do you want to know how to take photos on a tripod? You see, this all makes sense, doesn't it? Well, it does in my head anyway. Next episode, Photography Explained Podcast, episode 98. Which camera bag should I buy? 10 things for you to think about. Well, we all love camera bags, don't we? So why ever not? And no, I won't be telling you what the perfect camera bag is because I've still not found it. Shout out, shout out to me and my new course. Find out more at rickmacavoyphotography.com forward slash courses. Well, if I can't promote my course here, where can I? Okay, I'm done. Thanks for listening to my small but perfectly formed podcast. Podcast. <laughs> Thanks for listening to my small but far from perfectly formed podcast. To find out more about my podcast and do stuff to help me, check out photographyexplainedpodcast.com forward slash start.
brought to you by. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. I, the first take I did, which was um, the full episode, was rubbish when I listened back to it. So um, I've re-recorded it, and this is about two minutes less. So Maya must have done some waffling in that one. So this episode was brought to you not by coffee, but by water. Lots and lots of lovely, lovely water. Yes, I'm trying to improve some things in my lifestyle, water being one of them. Right, I'm waffling now. I'm going to shut up and say goodbye. I've been Rick McAvoy. Thanks again very much for listening to me and for giving me nearly 12 and three quarter minutes ish of your valuable time. And I will see you on the next episode all about camera bags. Cheers from me, Rick.